I don't know if you've ever wondered, but in our context, as I was mentioning early, I was always taught that uh, fathers are important. Fathers are important. Uh, and I don't know if you, if you wonder that, like how important the father is. I'm not speaking father figures, at least not yet. I'm speaking about the father. Like how important is your physical birth father? Uh, and, and maybe you wonder that. Maybe you wonder that. Maybe you have to navigate life without that father. So maybe that importance uh, might not be where it, it, it should be maybe or where it actually is because of how, you know, you've, you've been brought up and how you had to navigate uh, a, a fatherhood and, and sonship and, and daughtership. Like, uh, or maybe you're like, oh, yeah, like, you know, without my dad, I would have not been able to make it here. Uh, you know, he was present. And, and so regardless what it is, um, I, I want to show you some, some results of some studies that back up the understanding of how important is a father. Now, obviously, a father figure is as important. Yes, of course, absolutely, absolutely. And that's what we're going to speak on today, the importance of a father. So many of us, we've had father figures in our journey coaches and pastors and leaders and, and, and teachers and, and, and people and, and that, that stand up to be a father figure for our lives. And we bless them. I bless them. I bless every single one. Uncles, I bless them, every single one of them, because they have built up in me who I am today. So, but fathers are important. So bear with me. I want to read some of the, uh, the research that I think is going to bless us today. And uh, we put it actually on screen so that you want to take a pic or something, but you can read alongside. So uh, I want to read the first thing. This is, this is all research, and it's really relevant, and it showcases the importance of a father. It says 82% of the studies on father involvement and child well-being published since 1980 found, quote, significant associations between positive father involvement and, all, and the offspring well-being, their children. Uh, you, I left uh, the references there, so I don't have to read all of them. Uh, but this case, Paul Amaro and Fernando Rivera. God bless you. For, no, that's not the Fernando Rivera that wrote that. But uh, uh, <laughs> it's just like, bro, I didn't know you were an author of like fatherhood books. Uh, no, kidding. But uh, I'll leave them there so that we don't have to read them all because uh, some of them are re really long. But that's where we got them from. This particular one is Paternal Involvement and Children's Behavior Problems. It's a journal of marriage and family uh, from 1999. So uh, let me keep going. It says, in an analysis of over 100 studies on parent-child relationship, it was found that having a loving and nurturing father was as important for a child's happiness, well-being, and social academic success as having a loving and nurturing mother. Some studies even indicated father love was stronger contributor to some important positive child well-being outcomes. And you find that that was Ronald P. Rohner and Veneziano. I don't even know how you say it like that, but sure. Uh, from the book, The Importance of Father Love. The next one says, according to child psychiatrist Kyle Pruitt, a father's more active play style and comparatively slower response to a toddler or infant experiences frustration serves to promote problem-solving competencies and independence to the child. Thank you, Dr. Pruitt. Kyle, love you. And I know it's like when you read those things, we got a couple more to share, but I want to stop there because uh, this is pretty interesting. <laughs> it's not trying to throw moms under the bus. It's just, it's just telling the reality, okay? It's just showcasing that uh, like, like, like dads, like men, we manage conflict different than women. That's really what it's saying. So when it comes to, to the up, uprising, upbringing of, 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 of the children, when you have the interaction, not just in the loving, caring, playful way, but also in the hard moments, in the hard situations, in the frustrating situations, having the father figure, having the father's reaction and way of being helps so much to that. Maybe because moms, I don't know, maybe moms are a little bit more reactive. We love you, mom. You know, like, you know, may, maybe they're a little bit more like, I'll leave it there because moms are here and it's Father's Day and all you want. But it's, it's all to say the presence of the father, the intentional presence of the father, it's important. Even to these dynamics and how we learn in this moment, 
how we learn to manage problems. The next one says a research uh, from the University of Pennsylvania indicate that children who feel a closeness and warmth with their father are twice as likely to enter college, 75% less likely to have a child in their teen years, 80% less likely to be incarcerated, incarcerated, and as half as likely to show various, 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 right? Various, various. I always learn a new word when I'm here, and I practice, I promise. Various signs of depression. Um, uh, some, some of the uh, studies from Frank Furstenberg and Caitlin Harris from, that, from their book uh, from the University of Pennsylvania. And the last one, in, 20, in a 26-year-long study, meaning they took 26 years on it, researchers found that the, num the number one factor, say with me number one factor, in developing empathy in children was father involvement. Fathers spending regular time alone with their children translated into children who become compassionate adults. I have a sign for you right now. And this sign is very big and it's very simple. But I wanted to keep it clear to us today. And it is that fatherhood matters. And I want you to write it on the chat and say it with me but the sign is not out, and it's okay. Thank you. I want to move, and I want you to take a picture with your eyes. Fatherhood matters. Can you say it with me? Fatherhood matters. Now, if you're at that right now, I know you're feeling like, oh boy, what did I come here today? The burgers, I remind you. <laughs> right? It's like, oh my God. That's a lot of pressure, right? I feel it. I was reading this stuff and I'm like, holy moly. I know it was important, but I want to leave clear that it's really important. If you're still a dad, you still got time. If you're still a dad today, you have your children, and, and you got influence on your children, God, God gave you that. I want to speak to you. If you have contact with your children, you can influence them. If you don't have contact with your children, you can also influence them. Because God is with you. If you don't have your children, for whatever reason that is, I want to tell you that your prayer matters. That's how you can influence them. I know you've always heard the prayer of a mother. I want to add the prayer of a mother and a father. I say that because that's God's design. Marriage. Marriage is critical. But if that's not your case, if you're not married and your kids are with, with their mom or with their father, whatever it is, you still have influence. What you do matters. How you live your life matters. It does. Because fatherhood matters. Regardless of the situation, it matters. You can still do something. There's time for you. I want you to live encouraged today. And I know it gets sad, right? You read this stuff and you start thinking, oh, my dad did not do that. My dad didn't do this. My dad didn't do that. That didn't happen to me. And all of these empty spaces, I just want to remind someone that you do have a heavenly father that is an expert on filling spaces. And all the lack of your earthly father, he's going to provide it to you. He will. He's done it with me. He'll do it with you. Fatherhood matters. And the reality is that we got to this point, to this conversation, is fatherhood matters for good and for bad. That is the reality. All of us here have been hurt. All of us. So I want you to, for a moment, navigate to your six, seven-year-old self. Seven, eight years. That little kid, that little girl. That little kid, that little girl. They were hurt. They were hurt. And usually the people that hurt us are the ones who are closest to us. Do you agree? It really is just how it happens. The closest that we are, the more that you can hurt me. Just as the closest as we are, the more that you can help me. You can bless me. See? Proximity gives you intimacy. But that goes for both ways. The closest I am, the most influence I will have in your life. And if we're going to talk about hurt today... We need to know that the closest people to us was mom and dad. 
if they, if they were present. Or at the same point, if they weren't present, they were also helping to cause that pain inside of us as we were growing up. So I want you to think about your seven, eight-year-old self today, that little girl, that little boy. And I want us to navigate these things because fatherhood matters. It does. There are five things. You can find this in, in many researches, psychologists, and, and whatnot. You can really find it. Uh, there's many blogs about it and many uh, uh, articles about that. But there are five things, and there's, there's more. I just want to display five today. There are hurts that you and I experienced, especially when we were children. Uh, and you have a list you have a list right there, and, and maybe you've experienced some of them, some of them not, but you will find identified in some of this, and, and mind this, I'm asking you to be in your eight, seven-year-old self because this hurts that you might feel today. You can read the list, and you're like, oh, that's, that's me, but it's today, but I want you to understand there's a cause of why you're feeling that today, and you experience it, and it's because you first experienced it once somewhere in your childhood. Some of us have been rejected, abandoned, humiliated, betrayed, or have lived somewhat some sort of injustice in our lives. And I see, I'm not sure, but I started seeing this list myself, and I'm like, check, 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 check. Maybe, maybe you have not lived some of those, but I can tell you there's at least one there that you'll be able to track down to when you were a child. Maybe earlier than seven and eight, really, but... Um, these are the things that might be today affecting you. You ask yourself today, am I, am I experiencing re rejection? Am I experiencing abandonment? Am I experiencing humiliation? Am I experiencing betrayal or injustice? When you read this list, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about that? You know, growing up, uh, just to be open with you and share a little bit about my story, I see some of this and... Uh, number one and number two probably are on the top of my list. They really are because I've always felt rejected. I always feel rejected in school. I don't know if that happens to you. I'm like, Pastor, you felt rejected? You're so cool. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, appreciate that. But you speak in public. Um, when I was younger, in, in actually in high school, you would have never seen me this way. Ever. Hashtag ever, never, ever, ever, never, never. I was stage fright. Like when presentations came for like projects, bro, I would do everything I could. Sorry, I just call you bro. I, I would do everything I will do, brothers and sisters, <laughs> to have one of the other ones, like of my, my you know, the, the guys that were doing project with me, uh, to be able to, to present it. I, I would freeze. Nowadays, not like that. I've dealt with it. Clearly, I speak in public. But, but when I trace it back, God has allowed me to get to the moment that rejection came in to me. Like, I have pinpointed a specific situation in my life that I can say, wow, this is where I believe rejection entered in my life. I felt rejected maybe that I remember for the first time. And I've told this story before, but when I was about seven years old, I really wanted chicken. Anybody likes chicken? And uh, in, in my country, it's not KFC, okay? Uh, or what do you have here? Um, well, yeah, KFC. It's Pop -pa Popeyes. Pop Popeyes. Or the new one, that, you know, the, the, the little B one that they open? What is it? Charlie Beast. Anyways, um, it was Pollo Campero. The best. Thank you. Somebody here is, is very knowledgeable. And I really wanted a chicken that day. When I say I want, you know, if you've been a child, you have, you know, when you get really intense, like I want it, I want it, I want it. Like, hashtag I want it. There were no hashtags back in the days. I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it. So my dad... I'm not sure what was going on through his head that day, but he got fed up pretty quick. And I remember this, this moment where he just grabbed me and put me in the room. And you already know. I already know what was going down. And he said, until you don't stop crying, I won't stop hitting you. Because you're going to eat the food 
that we're serving you. It's like, I want my chicken. <laughs> like, I really did. You know, so he started really easy and he became in a physical abuse at the end of the day. You know, I tell the story. Now you're going to know what story it is because that's the time my dad ripped my, my hair off. Uh, if you heard this story before, I'm laughing. Some of you are like, okay, <laughs> that, that's not fun. Uh, it wasn't for sure. Uh, th that was like the ending of, of that moment when my dad just literally grabbed me and then threw me around the, the room. And you, you've heard the story. My mom said that I went to the, the hair salon and the, the sisters have fungus. Now you remember, right? Uh, and the fungus gave me a fungus. And so my hair fell. That was the excuse they gave to school. Because I get to the other day with a hole in my head. That's, that, that actually, uh, yeah, okay. Um, it wasn't that big. <laughs> this is just inheritance, but it's okay. Um, you know, and, and, and for me, you, you, you go like, but that's chicken. But that's okay, you know, that's rough. I had it worse. It, it's, it's not comparison, guys, because we all have a different story here. The point is not comparison, but it's actually being able to identify that's how I identify because that day I wanted chicken. What I got was a bit down, beat down, right? So the first emotion I remember feeling, we, listen, sometimes we don't remember what happened, but very most likely you will always remember how you felt. You might not have full memory of what things went down, maybe not, but you will always remember how you felt that day. And I remember both. I remember both. Clearly what happened and clearly how I felt. And I can tell you, I felt rejection over chicken. Okay? Now, my dad, whatever he was going through, whatever, that's, I, I don't know the, the details. I don't think he even remembers what happens. We've healed that area in our lives. But, but whatever he was going through, he wasn't thinking, I'm going to say no to this kid of mine so that he feels rejected the, le the rest of his life. That was not his thought. What I can know is my dad simply reacted out of whatever. Maybe he had a super bad day. He's a businessman. Maybe he lost thousands of dollars that day. I don't know, but I want a chicken. And what I got was this interaction that scarred me for the rest of my life until I've dealt with rejection. I've dealt with rejection all my life. That I will be in a room and I will not be accepted. That I will never be good enough for what I do. And these are the struggles that I've had to go through till this day. I got to constantly tell myself, yo, hold on a second. I'm not, I'm not rejected. I'm accepted. I am. And I can go through all of this list in my life. Maybe you can go through that list and go like, oh, I remember this. I remember that. There's a reality. We are wounded as children. The, the people around us that loved us the most, they also hurt us the most. And that's the reality. We grow up. We grow up and, 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 and coming from, from a father, it really affects you because we just read all the benefits or whatever that a father is supposed to give and this relationship, nurturing relationships, and you, you get something else. You get a different product. But I'm here today and I believe to remind some of you that your heavenly father will fill every empty space where your earthly father fell short, even if it's the whole list. Because where I found rejection, God gave me acceptance. If you feel rejected, I need to remind you today, God has accepted you. The Bible says, John 3, 16, 17, you know this verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Verse 17 says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. God does not reject you. God accepts you. If you receive this hurt from the lack of a mom or a dad or somebody in your family gave you this wound, you need to be reminded that God makes everything whole again. Where there is a wound, God brings healing and wholeness. Because God is a good God. And He's a good Father. You can put the next one, please. I want you to visually see it's exactly what happens with God. Where there is rejection, God brings acceptance. 
Today you're sitting here, you're watching at home as an accepted child of God. God gave his son for you and for me. Literally, the most precious jewel of a father. I've asked myself many questions. Would I sacrifice Luca? And I'm all honest with you guys. I wouldn't. Not for you. Sorry, I'm just being honest. But I don't think you'll do that for me either. That's my son, man. I'm not going to detach my son for you. And I love you. Imagine if I wouldn't love you. It wouldn't even cross my mind to sacrifice my son for you. And yet God did it for me. If that is not accepted, then what is it through through his sacrifice, he showed you and me that whatever, re any rejection that you and I have ever felt in our lives that has been real and it has affected us in our lives, there is acceptance for that rejection. Knowing that God loves you not because of what you've done, but because of who you are. Literally, who you are as an individual, as a man, as a woman, who you are. If you see yourself in the mirror and what you feel is rejection, God is trying to say to you, I accept you. And I sent my son to die for you. Because I wanted you back. Accept it regardless of our past. Accept it even though our lives might be a current mess today. We are accepted by God when our world appears to be crashing around us. God accepts us. The second thing we just saw, the second wound, is abandonment. That was huge for me. What does God bring you, the Father, when there's abandonment in our lives? What He brings is reclamation. Yep, reclamation. You know that there's another word that is the opposite of abandonment that I really loved, which is adoption. Where you were left behind... God adopted you, adopted me. How beautiful is that? The Bible says in Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 through 7, but when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, we just read John 3, 16, born of a woman, born under the law, verse 5, to redeem those who were under the law, you and you, uh, the people of Israel. So when the mighty received the adoption, that's you and me, of sons, and because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our, into our hearts crying, Abba, Father, Dad. That's what it means, Abba, Dad, Daddy, Father. So you're no longer a slave, but a son and a daughter. And if a son and a daughter, then an heir through the God, through God. In every need and empty space of our life, we can cry out, Abba, Father, because God, our heavenly Father, will support apply everything that we need. You know, I had to deal with abandonment. I felt alone. I'm a middle child. Any middle child in the house? God bless you. See, you didn't even want to raise your hand. Like, hmm, that's me. There's a, the middle child syndrome. I don't know if you know that, right? We don't deal really well with abandonment <laughs> and rejection because we're the middle child. We were like smack in the middle. We're five. So I got two older and two younger. Figure that out. And I'm right there in the middle. I always felt alone. I always felt left behind, always. But one day, Jesus reminded me that He has adopted me, literally. He has called me by name. God knows you by name. And He's giving you the spirit of a sonship and daughtership. Every morning that you wake up, God sees a daughter and a son waking up. If you've given your life to Christ, if you've chosen to believe in Him as your Savior, you are a child of God, period. That's what we believe. So every space of abandonment, you have the authority to cry out, Abba, Father, Dad, Daddy, Father, come and help me. You're never alone. I always love to use this analogy because I think it's so powerful. The Bible says that Jesus was hanging from the cross and the Father turned His back on Him. That is cruel. I can tell you based on that scripture that Jesus probably, Jesus, 
has been the only man alone truly on this earth. Because none of us are hidden in God's eyes. But he chose to give his back to his only son for you and for me. Jesus felt what truly, if you and I will truly feel what abandonment is, we'll die. We couldn't bear it. But God knows and God cares. And you're not alone. He's with you every single moment in the toughest or whatever situation you're going right now. You need to be reminded you are never alone. Never alone. Even if you feel it and it feels real, it's true, but it's a lie. The feeling, it feels, yes, I, I feel alone and it's excruciating pain, but the reality in the spiritual realm around you is no, you're not alone. God is right there. It will be worse if He, if he wasn't. You're not alone ever. Jesus made sure of that by being alone Himself as the Father turned His back on Him. Remind yourself that in every need, every empty space, you can cry out to God and He will come. The third thing as we start landing this, this hurt of humiliation, how does God as a Father provide when we feel humiliated? I love this word, is dignity. The Bible says, 1 Peter 2, 9 says, But you are chosen, you are a chosen race. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are people for His own possession, that you may proclaim the excellences of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. God will never put you to shame because God is proud of you. God is proud of His creation. And these moments of humiliation that maybe you've encountered in life, I don't know if you've ever been humiliated, but it happens, right, when you're kids. And to me, it was one day that um, we had sports day at school, and my parents, because the school said, I had to wear shorts. And I've always had extremely skinny legs. Stop looking at my legs. And um, always I tell the story, it happens, right? It's like, really? Yeah, I was called Chopstick. Anyways, um, it's like, Pastor, you had a really rough childhood. <laughs> yes, I have. You were messed up. Yes, I was. But Christ came and He has redeemed me. And I know who I am today, even with my skinny legs. But watch, I just signed up to the gym. <laughs> Pray for me so, you know, <laughs> I go to the gym. <laughs> uh, kind of like what's up you know <laughs> i'm turning 40 next year so you know i feel the need anyways but um i remember that day man wow people made so much fun of me that day it was crazy that's crazy i feel humiliated there goes the you know call him when you when we're, we're eating sushi so cruel <laughs> like like chopsticks you, you get it oh gosh i got it it's it's card me <laughs> Anyways, it's, it's humiliating, man. So I started feeling rejected again because of my body. It's, it's, it's how it works. I mean, it's, it's something maybe dumb. that ha No, it's not dumb. It affects you for the rest of your life. And when you don't heal, you repeat. So if you don't heal, you're repeating the same hurt to other people. Check it out. Just, just look at your life and your journey. But you know what? Like Steph says, you got to name your pain. You can't get healing if you, if you don't know what you need healing from. You got to name your pain. If it's humiliation, if it's rejection, if it's abandonment, you got you, you to gotta accept it. It's there. But God has called you by, by name and it has called you a royal priesthood. Like that sounds fancy, y'all. Like that's what the Bible's saying. You're not like a nobody. No, 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 no. You mean everything to God. There's two more betrayal and, and how God the Father deals with betrayal is obviously with faithfulness. Psalms 33, 4 says, for the, for the word of the Lord is right and true. Amen. He is faithful in all He does. Psalms 36, 5 says, Your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. He's faithful God. Psalms 119, you know it well. 
verse 89 and 90 says your word lord is eternal it stands it, it stands firm in the heavens your faithfulness continues through all the generations you establish an earth and it endures god is a faithful god god is always there will always be there because he's faithful so what he has promised you he will he will fulfill he's not men to lie says the bible he is a faithful god when was the last time you remind yourself that you have a faithful god because i'm telling you if you start reminding yourselves that you're accepted that god has 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 accepted you that he he has he has reclaimed you for himself he has adopted you if you remind yourself that you you have dignity because God gave it to you. If you start reminding yourself these things, you're going to start seeing things in a very different lens. And the last one, it's, it's rough because it's injustice. And then obviously God gives us justice. Acts chapter 10, 34. I think you're thinking justice and maybe you're going like, like just no but i love this verse i think it displays god's heart really well acts chapter 10 verse 34 says then peter began to speak he said i now realize how true is that god does not show favoritism wow and then we out there saying oh my brother he's, he's god's favorite look at the car he's driving and we go out there goes like oh look, look how god favors him or her God, look at them. Look at what he's wearing in his house. I'm pretty sure he doesn't got no problems. And look at me here. Poor me out here. But I believe the word of God. And I believe it's true from top to bottom. And I believe God does not have favorites. I really do. Now, how you deal with your faith, that's different. Because faith is not magic. Faith is a muscle that you need to put to work. So if you don't live by faith, that, that's not God. I believe God has given everyone the same measure of faith. If you put it to work, you go to the gym, hey, you got a faith membership, you got to put it to work. So don't be blaming God for somebody else's favor. Check out how your faith life is going. But God has no favorites. If God will give some people more faith than others, then He will give more love to others than... No, no. I, that doesn't sound like my God. No. He doesn't have favorites. He doesn't. So, He gives justice when there's unjust. Injustice in our lives. I don't know how life has treated you, and, but God hasn't accepted others more than you. And I pray that today, if that's your case, if you have that victim mentality, I pray that God can convince you that you're not a victim, you're a victor. You, you, God has chosen you. God loves you. He cares for you. I finish with this quote by Martin Lloyd he Jones. says, As Christian people, we must learn to appropriate appropriate by faith the fact that God is our Father. Christ taught us to pray our Father, our Heavenly Father. This eternal everlasting God has become our Father and the moment we realize that everything tends to change. He is our Father and He is always caring for us. He loves us with an everlasting love. He so loved us that He sent His only begotten Son into the world and to the cross to die for our sins. That is our relationship to God. And the moment we realize it, it changes everything. It changes everything. Let me pray for you, please. Close your eyes. God, thank you for this moment. I know you're here, Lord. And as sons and as daughters, we acknowledge your presence in this place. God, you know our hearts. You know our journeys. You know what we've been through. You know the hurts. You know the experiences that we've had and you know everything we lack. And still you're here. You don't reject us, you accept us, God. You haven't abandoned us. You picked us up into your kingdom. Literally, through adoption, spiritually, we are. God, thank you for that. Because you don't deny us. You, you, you don't. You, 
you love us. You're right there every moment of our lives. You've called us by name. You've, you've changed our clothes. Spiritually, you've made us new. You really, really care. make no exceptions of people you 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 just accept us all and i thank you for that today but i pray for my brothers and my sisters that might be having a really rough moment right now in their hearts and in their journey that they can know god that um, on a father's day today we we might be hurting yeah and it might be rough to remember and we might not have the best memories but we can still choose to honor our fathers that's what you've called us to do, honor, honor father and mother. If we still have them, help us to have a better relationship, to journey in the relationship with them. Help every father here in the room, myself included, so that we can help in the development of our children. Help us. Please. I need help. I, especially how things are right now, God. Help us. Help me, please. Help me. But also have the confidence that you provide in every space where we lack and that you are our heavenly father and in you we are complete we have everything we need in you god in jesus name is that we pray today amen and amen come on can somebody give it up for jesus come on can somebody give it up for jesus he's a good god <laughs>